transitioning into more abstract math beyond differential equations. I hope that this is a nice, just kind of fun little change of pace in a different way to review or learn. So, I thought that just giving a little Today we are going to be taking an axiomatic approach, an axiomatic approach. So it might be a little bit dry compared to looking at some intuitive, more popular examples of topology, but that's okay. I think it's very interesting. It lays out a nice foundation to build off of because of course all exciting stuff is when you say cool stuff like the ever popular meme or joke that topologists don't know the difference between a coffee mug and a donut because topologically they have the same shape. It's a donut is like a torus shape and so um, they have the same certain properties and are homeomorphic, homeomorphic. So that kind of gets all the hype or um, even just in the two-dimensional plane, a circle is topologically equivalent to a triangle. And it's just this idea of working with specific properties that don't really change when you morph a shape. And by that I mean just kind of stretching it or pretending like it's clay and just reshaping it without cutting or gluing or tearing it 
down, you're just kind of reshaping it. And there are certain properties that don't really change or are preserved. And so that part gets all the hype, I think. But um, mathematically, there's a lot more that we can go into. And so looking at this axiomatically, axiomatically, will help lay a foundation for us to build off of or look at examples of certain topologies or topological spaces in the future. So we're going to take this nice and slowly here. I hope that you enjoy it. Don't take it too seriously. Well, you know here there's never any pressure in our math nook. Just play around with what seems interesting and let the rest go. Let the rest go. Wash, wash, wash around you. There's plenty of time to feel the pressure <laughs> in the world. Right here, right now, I'm just glad that you're here as you are. And let's take a first look at a topology. Topology, topology. You ready to relax a bit? Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, let's get going, cutie patootie. Ah, the angel. Okay, so now let's go ahead and write out these axioms and define what a topology actually is, like we said. So, let's start out with our set X. So, I don't have a formal definition formulated or anything, but I do hope that this gives us an idea of what's going on. So, of course, feel free to adapt this notation and these ideas to whatever book you might be using or whatever your teacher might say or just whatever you prefer, okay? But let's say we have a set and let's go ahead and call it X. So let X be a set. And there are different examples of topologies and when we define our topological space, um, it'll be up to us to define what this set idea, but we just need to have a set, and we have tau, which is going to be our topology, and tau is a collection of subsets. collection of subsets of our set X. So there's going to be a little bit of set theory involved here, but it's basically a set of subsets. And these subsets of X are called open sets. These are open sets. Okay. And so we don't want just any collection of subsets. They have to satisfy three axioms in order for tau to actually be a topology. So I'll say tau is a topology if, and then we need specifically for this collection or set of subsets to satisfy these three properties. So number one um, is the most basic one, the empty set and the entire set itself must be in tau, in this set of subsets. So the empty set and the entire set itself must be in tau. Two and three have to do with intersections and unions of these subsets. So let's go ahead and start with intersection. So if we have one if, so if we have one subset of x, so if u1 is in tau, and 
another subset in tau, then the intersection must also be in tau. The intersection of the two subsets must also be in our topology. And so in this case, it has to be finite intersection. So, in other words, if this all stays within the topology, this will be closed under intersection. And so, if we have two subsets in our topology, the intersection will also be in our topology. Okay, but for union, so the third axiom is that the infinite union must also be in the topology. So I can union however many, um, however many of these subsets I want, and it should also stay within the topology. So this one's kind of harder to index because I can have as many as I want. So if U1, U2, U3, U4, dot, 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 are all within the topology, so N just being an arbitrary number of subsets or whichever ones, then the union of all of those must be within the topology as well. So this is just an notation I'll use, but in general this represents infinite union. Infinite union. And that remains closed within this topology. Oops. Infinite union. So, for the finite intersection, it just means if I take two subsets that are in the topology, the intersection must still be in the topology. But for union, if I take as many as I want, the infinite union, as many subsets in the topology, the infinite union still in the topology. So, if you ever want to confirm that something actually is a topology or a topological space, first you'll want to define your set, and then you want to make sure that these three properties hold for whatever set of subsets you define. So, whatever you call an open set, um, here, your collection of open sets, want to make sure they actually satisfy these three properties. Okay, here. So, for a topological space, you want to define your set, and then you'll want to define your collection of open sets. And then as long as those satisfy these three, then you have a topology, which is really cool. So, your set can be stuff like for instance, um, R2, right? R2 being our XY Cartesian coordinate plane. And one way to consider that as a set, because how can you consider a plane as a set? Well, you can consider an infinite set, and you can consider that plane as an infinite set of points. Just every single tiny little point you can say or define that to be an element of your set X. So that's our idea of like point set topology, but we won't get too much into that, but that's just a general idea here. And so you can play around with ideas on the two-dimensional plane of what an open set might look like. This is good fun. Um, and you can do stuff like this for a number line and stuff like that. So a lot of times when this is first introduced, you start with the literal sets like 1, 2, 3, or A, B, C, or something like that, just to get a feel for what's going on. But then you can apply this to different types of topologies with different properties here. So you have this notion of what an open set or what open sets look like. So before I let you go, I wanted to also mention two little, um, two little definitions or default topologies, one being the 
largest case, the all-encompassing case for Tao, and the other being the most minimal case for Tao. So I guess let's start with the minimal one. And so if I have a topology, let's just say let um, let x be our set. So again, we're just here with the general so this applies always. So for whatever set, then we can have the topology of just the empty set and X itself. This is a collection. As a collection, it's a set of subsets. So first of all, the empty set is a subset of X. The empty set is a subset of any set, and x is a subset of x, because any set is a subset of itself. So this is where we get a little bit into some basic set theory, but these two are subsets of x, and tau is a collection, so it's a set of subsets, specifically the empty set and the entire set x. So this is the most minimal um, topology because we can also confirm that the empty set and the set X itself satisfy these three. So is the empty set and X in the topology? Yes, literally. That is what the topology is. I see it here. I see it here. If I have two subsets in my topology, in this case, let's say U1 is the empty set and U2 is um, X, the whole entire set X. The intersection of the empty set and X is the empty set, which is still in this topology. Um, and then if I take an infinite union here of the empty set, union any other set is that set. So. The union here is going to be x, which is also here in our topology. So you can go through one, two, three for this case. This is the most minimal basic topology for any set that we have. So at the least, you know, you have this one, and this is the minimal one, and I believe that's called the indiscrete, indiscrete topology. And the other one being the most kind of quote-unquote maximal one is what we call um, the power set. Power set of X, which I guess you can call it like this, however you want to write it, or P of X or something like that, but it's basically the set of all subsets. make more sense if we work through an actual concrete set, a little one like 1, 2, 3, and A, B, C, um, and I will dedicate a video to do this for fun, but for now, let's build a little bit of intuition. So this power set is our set of all possible subsets of X, so that would include the empty set and X itself since those two are subsets of X by definition or by default. Um, you know, if we have two, uh, two subsets of X in this power set, the intersection will also be in this because um, this literally is the set of all possible, um, all possible subsets. So that intersection should exist within this as well. And then if we union any number of these subsets together, it should still be within this because it has all of the subsets. This is a little bit more intuition building, a little more hand wavy for now, but I hope that that kind of gives you an idea of how this one is the largest possibility, this one being the smallest possibility. So this one is the discrete the discrete topology. This is the indiscrete one. 
and otherwise most of our collections of subsets are going to be somewhere in between these two and that's where we get some really cool um, fun examples to look at but these two by default are going to be topologies um, for any set x so anyways I hope that this was kind of fun to look at this is definitely um, good fun for me and if you are asleep right now I'm wishing you sweet sweet happy dreams if you're continuing on with your day I hope it's a good one and if you are continuing on to study topology I'm wishing you good good luck <laughs> and I will see you around for